Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. you uh, hear us? Yes, yes you're, uh, you're live and you're on the big screen. Very good. Okay, yeah, fine. So um, we're here with our last case and um, this seems to be a very <laughs> tough one. Uh, Matthias was struggling already while it was still the other case. Maybe you can show what you've done so far. And At first I case. introduce you into the case. Uh, so I it's a calcified you. BTK lesion left side, critical limb ischemia. Four foot ulceration, rest pain, severe claudication left side, ABI is low, diabetes mellitus, oh, no and renal impairment. Next slide. So, this is an angiogram which is uh, some weeks old. So, left proximal SFA is open and patent. Then, however, we have the subtotal stenosis in the mid portion of the SFA below the knee. Every vessel is occluded but the posterior seems to be the main one reaching down to the foot and feeding the foot. Next slide. So we decided to go for an integrated approach. Of course, the bifurcation is not uh, very good for going crossover. And uh, then we want to, want to pass the below the knee vessels uh, using a scoring balloon, DCB, and maybe also uh, short tacks or stents or whatever needed to open this relative long occlusion. So if we switch to, the, switch to the live screen and I can show you. So it was difficult to go in and decorate, uh, but it's a little bit obese, but at least I managed to bring here uh, six French cheese in and the subtotal stenosis in the meanwhile changed uh, to an uh, occlusion. Uh, below the knee, more or less the same situation, distal SFA and popliteal segment patent. And um, I did not angiogram down to the foot because the flow was too low. And then we tried only this segment here right. at the proximal below the knee segment. OK, then we uh, I thought, OK, at first you have to open this uh, lesion. Uh, I could pass a wire down relatively easy. Uh, this is a PG2 wire and a quick cross catheter. It was easy to pass it down. A little bit too easy, expecting thrombus, that's why I used Rotarex. In the meanwhile, I placed in a 6 French 45 centimeter sheath and create, and with the Rotarex, I could achieve some flow. Here. Uh, but distal, there was still an occlusion, and I did not Rotarex this distal occlusion. One more pass. The thing here and this yeah, distal where the calcium is, there was the subtotal stenosis. I could not push the rotorex across. Okay, then I did uh, PTA with a five millimeter balloon, and you see here it's some soft material in. However, some flow so far, proximal seem to be thrombus. Again, one pass with the rotorex with this result, and then we decided to put in a stent. Here we put it in one 620 Eluvia stand, and we had to add one more stand proximal, which uh, only fit in after pre-ballooning, and this is the results after these two stands. So far, good. Then I had a look downstream, and of course, <laughs> a little distal embolization. And however, I used the Rotorex again to treat also this. Hopefully, I filmed this. Okay. One second. The same size or the Maybe smaller here. one? Uh, I, did, I, I did not film this. So I had only the six uh, French uh, Rotorex device here on the table, and I used all time the six French device. But here this is the result after doing a Rotorex. So the thrombus was away maybe a little bit, which looks like a little bit too much Rotorex in this area, but no bleeding so far. So there we are. And uh, then we Hello. did an angiogram again, uh, which was also difficult because the sheath is still occluding a little bit. However, we tried to bring a uh, wire down. This is here Pacific balloon. Uh, and we tried to go in the straight vessel down here, peroneal, but we could not success.
you see here. Then we used an angled catheter to try to find a way into the posterior tibial artery. Um, this is a four French Stutkin's catheter. In the meanwhile, we could bring it down, but only in these little collaterals, which was not effective. And then, okay, and then here we pulled it back, and however, Andre created <coughs> the loop, and <coughs> the loop we could push down any, anywhere, maybe peroneal, and over this loop we could um, re enter the distal peroneal artery, and this is an injection into uh, the distal this is peroneal a, artery. Is this a, a blind, blind advancement? Yeah, more or less. But this uh, so this shows us uh, how the foot perfusion is. So you see here the peroneal is not feeding very well oh, over the collaterals, yeah. either to the father anterior tibial dorsal spedis or oh. also not very good to the posterior tibial. And here we decided now to go for a retrograde puncture the in the arch power. of the posterior tibial artery. And that's what mm -hmm. Andre is doing in the moment. Yeah, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, we try now to puncture. Nee, nee, blauer, no, no, no. So maybe we do have the duplex uh, can you, uh, yeah. connected. Can you can sh show it on screen. Hey, can, can we see what you are doing? Yeah, yeah sorry, we were just uh, checking whether the ultra, uh, uh, ultrasound should be connected now. Is it connected, maybe? Is it, is it connected, Media Ventures? They just have to plug in something. Yeah, so we have to puncture here relatively low, of course. We could do this with X-ray. Now we have the catheter in the distal peroneal. We could inject here a little bit and see um, uh, see, see the distal portion here on Angio. But uh, maybe also ultrasound is good. But Andre, okay, now uh, it's connected. And it's yeah, connected. Andre, this is uh, this is Fadi Saab here. Yeah. It's really good to see you. Um, I, I know ah. you've always you've always utilized fluoroscopy to access tibial vessels. When did you when did you change to ultrasound? And uh, can you give us your tips on one versus the other? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I saw you doing this uh, so so much with ultrasound. So I thought. Let's try. Um, I, was I was not no, looking I, to get I the really credit, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. What is that? What is that? Sure, Fadi. Sure. Um, sorry, but uh, so uh, we started uh, several years ago, um, and um, and I, I like it very much. In fact, really, for very superficial arteries, I don't uh, puncture the. Uh, the, the peroneal artery, as you do. Uh, we do puncture dorsal pedis, posterior tibial, and uh, 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 proximal anterior tibial, but not so much peroneal artery. And I'm still not far away from your skills to do this here. Um, but here, not sure whether you can see this here. I think the... Do you think the plantar branch is maybe sometimes difficult, no? I, I, I agree, but, uh, ah. but uh, you, very nice demonstration because you can show, you're showing the needle going through the anterior and the posterior wall of a tibial vessel, so that's very nice. Yeah. That's a very promising so sign, certainly. The, uh, needle is in. At least Could you have bleeding, some blood. Actually. Mm. Yes, there is some blood. It also looks quite reddish. Our machine is maybe not the best here, I must admit. Du kannst mal B hochdrehen. Nee, das geht halt leider nicht. Ist schon voll. Can you maybe... I hold the... No, sorry. Matthias, can you try to push wire? Just a moment, I try here to, to take... Mm -hmm. Andre, you had mentioned wire. earlier that you're using... Wire a little bit, uh, needle Draht, draht, and a bit of a Sorry. You had mentioned earlier, ah, okay. you can see yeah, this wire very well. Yeah. The question is, is that, 
lucent wire that you can see, does that There's steer as well as the wires on. that you're used to using, like the P2, PT2, or the V18, or the Command? Do they steer well, these, these uh, echo lucent wires? No, they're not. For this excess, they're not good. So here I'm currently using the, um, the wire coming with a Cook um, um, peel excess sheath. We have maybe punctured a little <coughs> high close <coughs> to the occlusion. Uh, maybe you have some other wires which you prefer. Would be happy to hear what you use. I don't do um, ultrasound, so I'll, I'll, I'll should be one that. which you can, yeah. Uh, not very far in, unfortunately. You know, an, an excellent, a uh, couple and of good wires to use in these uh, cases where you have the reconstitution of a posterior tibial artery around the ankle is you can start with the Boston Scientific uh, V18 wire because you can loop it at the distal CTO <coughs> cap and advance it from there. Yeah. Another wire is the Gladius 018 from Asahi. Also, that's a good wire because it gives you a supportive body and yeah. it's a soft tip. So. Can, can you see those mm -hmm. wires on ultrasound, Claudi? You can see them very, very well. Oh, you can, okay. Claudi, what about a uh, Command 18 here, just because it's not going to lose the memory of the wire? Yeah. This is in the clan. Oh, oh, 8 Command also yeah. is, a very, is an excellent wire. Ah, then dilatato. Wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I think the puncture was a little too high. Uh, I think I need to take the dilator now in. Hopefully, this will work. Otherwise, I have to puncture once again more distal. He's doing that. Have you seen the Command 18? I, I, we've had one instance. I love the Command 014. Love it. Uh, 018, we've had one where I got tibial access to perineal and got the conglomeration of uh, the coating material awesome. on the wire. Have you seen that? Has anybody else seen that? It was really was, difficult was to get that, that was out. Was it while you were crossing or coming out it of the needle? It was literally while it was bareback. You know, I always go bareback. And as I advanced it up and started advancing the mm -hmm. quick cross the six eyes, yes. it became a ball, Any command, a visible I've ball. I've not seen that. Absolutely. That sounds concerning. How, how'd you manage it? I stuck another vessel, okay. and at the very end, I put a wire down Sorry. and then pulled the old Tennessee pool. But, uh, okay. Okay. It, was, it was a challenge. It was a one-time yeah. thing. I didn't That's know if else had seen it. Yeah, I, I, I personally have That's not seen that. That's the next. Okay. It's thin. Okay, dilator of the four-inch uh, yeah, four sheath is in. We take now a command 18 in. So in this circumstance where you have a wire or a support catheter down the perineal and you're trying to get, you know, re-entry re from retrograde in the posterior tibial, do you think there's a role for having a balloon inflated in the tibial perineal trunk and, and sort of pre-dilating and getting the perineal trunk ready? Or do you think that makes it more complicated to recanalize from a retrograde approach? I mean, that, that's, that's a great question. I, I think uh, a retrograde approach is safer in the sense that a retrograde dissection, perforation, or being subintimal is much safer, if I may say, in comparison oh. to an integrated approach. No, uh, I, I would try not to oh. modify the plaque proximally as much as so I can until, until we get close there. So I would like to loop it? I would like to loop it. Yeah, this is here. I shift the dilatator a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I'm not sure. This is looping now. It's I think it's still inside. What do you think? Um, uh, we can take another wire in, or I loop this here. Huh? Mm -hmm. I, I would loop, loop it, Andre. <laughs> ah, not sure. Or yeah, I'm not sure. Loop or Was perforate? Yeah, let's Maybe push, lift up the foot. Lift up the foot. Can you do this a little bit? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure yet whether I should loop now. Maybe I should push a little bit further the dilator in. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, here's a lot of resistance. Okay. Okay, looped. That looks promising. Okay. Very, yeah. Safe. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Mm. So, so easy. Mm -hmm. what, what's the Maybe resistance like that you're feeling right now, Andre? Yeah. Uh, same resistance as uh, which I felt when I went down the... the um, Peroneal. So I would stop here. Let's take, um, yeah, so the stump from the stump of the peroneal, we went, um, did you show this? 
that we went into the distal perona. First, a lot of resistance, but then it jumped in. So, um, so now um, uh, we should maybe, maybe it's a high offspring of the posterior. Maybe we are close. So um, now, um, ipsilateral oblique. So Andre, with the wire up that high, do you, do you think it would be helpful to bring a support catheter in instead of that dilator now, or do you need it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, we take a, a quick cross in now, okay? Yeah. We could also take the sheath in and balloon maybe a little bit proximal. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what uh, we have to expect here. Maybe high offspring of the posterior, maybe yeah, very, very short um, uh, tube and pair trunk. We can give a slight injection here into the tissue over the catheter to see that we are not in the muscle, but I don't think we are in the muscle. I think we are really somehow subintimal in some kind of artery. Uh, Andre, at the moment, it's not so easy to understand where your loop is. Can you make an angiogram? Yeah. Uh, no. You can maybe explain. No. No, I can't. I don't know where I am. Uh, um, you, you can only hope where you are. Um, Exactly, yes, yes. <laughs> That's correct. We're hoping with you. Um, Heads to fest? I, I, you. I think you're getting deflected yeah, at the proximal so CTO cap. I mean, I think you're in a very good spot. I think you're getting deflected at the proximal CTO mm -hmm. cap, and maybe an angiogram yeah. from above will show you the takeoff of the PT because we couldn't tell from all the collaterals. Yeah. I, 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 I have okay, confidence yeah. that this no, is I in the PT. But the draht is not the right thing. This wire is maybe not the right one here. It could be a very high offspring here of the posterior. Not sure whether it's a ah, whether it's time for a CTO wire. Mm -hmm. Maybe this will destroy um, our chance. We could go for another angulation and see yeah. whether we are completely wrong. But this, of course, is usually not the right direction or angulation to probe. No, you're not so Looks bad. very good. But nevertheless, I would go back. Maybe, uh, maybe see to your wire. What do you think? Shall yes. we start with, with wind 202? Wind 202. And which CTO guide wire are you intend to use? Yeah, a 014 CTO guide wire. It's the wind 200 T. So maybe rather um, start with a more uh, benign wire before we go to an 018. Uh, but here it's really hard, very mm. hard, very hard. Maybe it's wrong here. Uh, but I mean, if, it's, if something is really hard, that's actually not so bad, huh? Um, maybe also a, a Connect 150T. That's too few. Um, that's too few. Uh, Connect 150T. Just a moment. Remind me, please, was the, uh, was the posterior tibia occluded as ostium, or was it a proximal occlusion? Yeah, uh, we couldn't, yeah, we, we uh, from, from the ostium couldn't, we can't see any ostium down to this, to the malleolus. So very long occlusion. Um, Torka, some Torka. Yeah, maybe this is too soft here for this, just a moment. We need a talker. Just a moment. I have. Uh, I mean, now we we know where to go to from undergrade. We could start to probe here from undergrade. I think no, this wire has uh, too much angle just a moment. Um, I take uh, now 250T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Mhm. Können wir mal noch eine Map haben, bitte? If you did probe from above, would you do it through an FR4 or something to give you angulation into the nub? Yeah, I would uh, modify a catheter. I would cut maybe some tip oh. of Never mind. any angled catheter. <laughs> yeah. It gives you so nice grip into arteries. Yeah. So this is the Connect 152. At least it goes somewhere. Probably <laughs> wrong, but... Yeah, um, yeah, again, I think yeah, this is maybe completely outside or... Do you want to get yes. a different oblique to see where that is? Completely wrong, okay. Yeah, just a moment first. Uh, here are so many more res uh, spots of resistance which are maybe uh, worthwhile to, to try. This one here is not so bad, I think. I could now change oblique the other way. So I think here you really need. Oops, hast du das abgemacht? Okay. Nein, Wasser drin wahrscheinlich. Oh. Just a moment. Well, not completely wrong, I would say, but I think it's really now worthwhile. What do you think, um, Matthias, to take a balloon in from undergrade yeah, to yeah. balloon that trunk here? Ballooning sometimes also opens a gate for your wire uh, and then take an angle catheter down and probe really at that point where we are just facing to that trunk from, from retrograde. Still have command 18. Well, I will continue here a little bit. No, wrong. Yeah, it takes time to do this here. But it's uh, interesting to see that sometimes you have you need also time. You cannot go. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, you shouldn't rush here in this. Uh, Und ein 44 Pacific. Also, no, looks okay. 43 Pacific. Yeah. No, no. I think we wait now for the balloon from retrograde from undergrade. Uh, balloon this area and so on. Yeah, we could also bring a balloon in from retrograde, balloon upwards. Still many more options. Mm -hmm. Andre, I think what we're going to do um, while you're, uh, well, it's fun yeah. to watch you struggle a bit um, <laughs> since all of us have been there. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is ask Steve to come on up and give his talk. So we're going to break ah, away for just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all you needed. Yeah. A, little, a little thread is always big. Yes. yes, yes. Very Go nice. On. I'm sorry, Michael, but so, you are so uh, Andre, slow. Okay. Uh, Andre, what do you think? So you've got the wire down in the, in the uh, perineal. What made that fly up? Did it just follow the wire or give you a target? What, what made that, uh, besides your hands, which is obvious, but uh, was there something about the wire? going integrate that made it easier to cross from retrograde? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no, that was uh, just the occasion that, uh, I mean, by, by ex accident uh, directly <laughs> uh, at that point, the wire from undergrade cross. No, I don't, don't think it has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. But nice, so wire is uh, nicely flying upwards. The quick cross catheter does not follow here, as you can see. Very hard here. So maybe we have to snare wire first, pull it through, and then balloon, or change to another support catheter, yeah, or pull wire out again <laughs> and take an O14. Maybe not this, no. Yeah, let's snare wire. And, yeah, but if you have a presentation to give now, uh, we will continue to work here a little bit. Okay. And okay, all right, we'll do. Okay, yeah, so I'm not sure where, uh, when uh, we, um, we worked for on our own, maybe here. So we took the wire here into the no, uh, no. lateral plantar branch. We ballooned here first with a 2-0 balloon, then took a vascular truck. But there's already uh, a channel, a small channel. We took a vascular truck in, a vascular truck 2.5-200, and took our time here to dilate everything. You can see here distally nice opening, mid portion not so nice. 
Um, also here, mid portion, not so nice, more proximal, nicely open, of course, arteries are bigger there. Yeah, thereafter, um, nitro, and it was actually also quite painful, this ballooning. We still have residual stenosis here. So then we uh, gave some lidocaine intra-arterially that helped fantastic here to take a three millimeter Lutonix balloon. Uh, yeah, we start with 2.5 distal, 5 distal and um, then went up to <coughs> three millimeter proximal. So we treated now everything with drug coated balloons. When you say intra-arterial lidocaine, how did you administer that? Yeah, uh, intra-arterially. So over our sheath, slowly we give um, two, yeah, actually 10 milliliter, 2%. Or direct in the vessel, if possible, yeah. because yeah. it was more and or less direct. It helps, fantastic. Uh, it doesn't last very long, but it's really very nice. Uh, Marco Manzi does it all the time, and uh, it's really, really nice. Cardiologists in the audience are a little bit cringy, Andre, here, <laughs> with, with the... With the yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the lidocaine. Because <laughs> I think that's, uh, how, yeah, how many sure. milligrams of uh, <laughs> Lido that is uh, IV? That's, um, that's more than 20 milligrams, I think. No? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the concentration. No, it's, uh, it's yeah, it, it's 20, it's 20. 20, 20 milligrams of, uh, of intra-arterial uh, uh, yeah. lidocaine. Okay. It's looking good, though. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah. This is improving yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And when we left yeah. you, Andre, you couldn't get a catheter retrograde, so you snared an externalized wire and then went integrated and were able to get a wire uh, or balloon uh, across it to get the ostium. Oh, we didn't show you this? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, we, did, we didn't show you the snaring here, of course. Yeah, snaring. So we, I couldn't pass the, the support catheter upwards, so we had to snare our wire here in the mid-SFA pull it out and um, yeah, then uh, clamped both ends and uh, actually pulled, pulled our, our balloon downwards. Now here you really, I mean, we, I couldn't pull out the wire once again to give it another angle, but it worked actually. So here you can see that now the balloon is falling downwards and uh, both uh, are falling downwards. So once again, here the last image, not so bad. Beautiful result. Very, 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 very nice. nice. Uh, but, uh, what about uh, to the middle part? Uh, do you intend to go with a shorter yeah. balloon? Because with a 20 centimeter balloon, uh, it is difficult to have a uniform dilatation yeah. of the balloon. Correct. So probably you have to go to Correct. the four yes. or six uh, centimeter balloon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah I suppose that we will you go can here go with to 340. To, uh, Three millimeter or two point five? Three. Three. Yeah. yeah. I start with two point five, forty uh, go up with high pressure. We were already at sixteen, eighteen atmospheres, so okay. We're gonna work a little bit more on that. So Andre, All right, you work excellent on okay. result, Andre. Thank that, that, you. That looks fantastic. Yeah. And, and, that and looks very it's 10 nice. o'clock in Leipzig. So yeah. please, to uh, Matthias and you and your team, uh, great appreciation yeah. from New York for uh, working at 10 o'clock for these live thank cases. You. So please thank your team as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank, thank you. you.